Hello and welcome to the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar. This session will be going over annotating your drawing in AutoCAD LT 2018. For presenters, we have Dave and myself, Mariah, and we also have Bryce Fellin uh, moderating the questions. Uh, Bryce, are you seeing the screen updating at all? No. There we go. All right, so we have some upcoming webinars. Scaling and Hatching in AutoCAD 2018 is going to be the next one, August 17th. And then we have one about blocks, attributes, dynamic blocks, and then layouts, printing, and plotting. And in November, we have a CAD content management and customization webinar. As always, we have our previous AutoCAD webinars on the YouTube playlist. We have over 100 videos that you can browse. And we also have the box folder containing all of the data sets that you can download and follow along if you like. So here is a preview of that YouTube channel. You can see we have uh, multiple, multiple topics covered, uh, 3D, tips and tricks, um, publishing, really a, anything you want. You can do a quick search, find uh, generally we, the title, including what it covers. If we scroll through, we can see there's just about 100 on there. There we go. Okay. So uh, a lot of, lot of stuff. If you want to pull up that channel, we'll go over quite a bit. And then we also have the community forums. If you have a quick question, those are staffed by both peers, expert elites, and some Autodesk employees uh, for quick answers to your questions. And then we have the customer council if you want to join one of our beta programs to offer feedback on new releases. So we have our knowledge network, as always, with some quick links for getting started, different downloads and troubleshooting. Um, and then we have a couple polls to go over. Okay, so the first one, is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? It looks like we've got quite a few returning attendees, but uh, around 13% new people. So welcome, all of the newcomers, and thank you for returning. Everybody else? Right, so you have 88% no, 12% yes. Always good to see new faces. And then our next one, what is the current version of AutoCAD or LT that you're working with? So it looks like we have quite a few, about 40% 2018. A lot of people using 2017 still. Not too many people earlier than 2016. Good to see everyone's moving up to the latest releases. Uh, 2018, 44, uh, still a good amount in uh, 2017 though. And our last poll for now, what AutoCAD application version are you using? Uh, LT or one of the vertical, or sorry, LT or Windows? Uh, so it looks like mostly Windows users. A few LT, but mostly regular AutoCAD for Windows. So 66% AutoCAD for Windows, 34, no Mac users today. It's okay. So today we're going to be covering text, 
leaders, dimensions, center lines, and revision clouds. So let's see this in AutoCAD. All right. So here we've got a title block already set up. We've got some text in it. We can see that we have different size text, but it's all looking pretty much the same. So that's because of text styles. Most of what we're going over is going to be on this annotation tab right here. And so for text, we've got two different styles we can choose from preloaded into the drawing annotative and standard, and we can pull up our textile manager either through this drop down here, or we've got a tiny arrow here, or if you haven't edited the PGP file, we can also do ST for style. So this is where all of our textiles will be stored. Like I said, annotative and standard are going to be the two defaults loaded in. Annotative has a special property that lets it scale. Um, depending on different scales you put into the drawing, but for time constraints, we're going to focus on just standard. Um, so annotative, you'll know by having this little icon here. So if we make standard annotative, we can see that icon flip on. We'll check it back off. So even though we do have two styles already loaded, we always want to create our own. We don't want to use annotative and standard because, as I said, where they're preloaded into the drawing, anything we edit um, and insert into a new drawing will be overridden with these two default styles. So whatever is already set in the drawing sort of wins out, so it's no use making a bunch of changes to standard because the moment you insert it into a different drawing, it's all going to be gone. So we'll create a new text style here. All right, and so for styles, if we have a lot in the drawing, we can use a little filter here, styles in use. It'll show us what's used, so now we know standard is what's being used here, and then it also always shows the current drawing. So if we actually flip to current, we can see that our new style obviously doesn't have any text in it. So we'll go back to showing everything. Set current. Okay, so let's modify our custom style. Let's go to something like Greek. So if you want to flip through the styles real quick, you can use different letters. Uh, to jump up and down. We can just type G real quick to get down to, let's do Romans. It's always a good one. So in the text editor, we can see that we have two sort of icons next to our fonts. We have true type. If we select that, we'll get some font style differences. Uh, these are sort of a raster font style. Um, you can see they're usually much bigger and uh, have these bold and regular, sometimes italic options, depending on your font files. But if we click on one of these SHX fonts, these are all vector fonts. They were first created um, for things like pen plotters that have to follow one vector to draw out the lines. They're not just for people like Dave that had to use pen plotters, though. They're also good for uh, laser cutters. If you need to quickly etch some text, you can use a SHX font, and it's much quicker than having to sit there and let it etch raster styles. Um, so we've got a couple other options. We can flip it upside down or backwards. Um, so backwards is always good if you're laser cutting acrylic and you want to flip it. That's uh, handy to have. And then you can also you know, vertical and different label styles. We can change the width, and we can give it an angle, too, if we want uh, an italic version. And then we've also got a height here. So this will be the height of the text in the drawing, but we usually want to leave it zero so that we can have overrides either in the dimension style or the leader style. I'll show you a little more of that later. Um, so once we've got our text set up, we can set current, yes, close. Right, so there's two different types of text we can put in, single line and multi-line. Single line, we can just select the base point, and then it's asking for a height. 125, and then it wants an angle of rotation, and then we can just text drawing. Okay, and we can add by clicking other places and just add other lines of text. Okay, 
And then we've also got multi-line text that lets us draw a box and then add multiple lines within there. Oops. If we want these text options, a lot of people before the ribbon came out had the formatting toolbar. If we like that, instead of going to the ribbon for all our options, we can right click within this text box and down under editor settings, show toolbar right here. And now we've got our formatting toolbar back and we can move that wherever we need it. Um, within the formatting toolbar, we've got some cool things. We can add a list, uh, either bulleted, or numbered is always good if we have uh, some things we're calling out. We can do note one, note two, and then we can even include subnotes if we just tab over note 1.2. And then if we discover that um, maybe we want all caps, or, or obviously I haven't capitalized these um, for conformity, we can use this little um, other options drop down. And we've got a change case over here that's pretty handy. So we can select uppercase and flip it all up. Or we can even change down to lowercase if we'd like to do that. Um, some other things that are handy in this little drop down are if we're calling out an angle, we can put in a symbol. So say it's 45 degrees. Uh, we can symbol degrees and that'll pop right in. Okay. Yeah, Mariah, that's... Uh the ability to change case is really handy when you have uh, notes that you're getting from somebody else and you just want to paste it in and then change to all uppercase so that it reads better in your drawing files. That's a great tip. Oh, for sure. I used to have to copy it all into um, uh, Microsoft Word because I had, I had no clue that existed. And it's so much easier. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's see. One other thing that's handy with text that I wanted to show is if we get this out of here, we can add a field. So let's put a text box in here. Again, we've got our formatting bar popping right up because we set that in the options already. So if we want to make a field, let's say we want the name of the drawing. So draw name. We can just highlight the text go insert field. So we've got multiple options. Uh, if we go under all, we could sift through these all day long, really. Um, the most popular are uh, the document options. We can get the last person who edited the drawing uh, and saved it. We can get the file size. Um, let's see, there's a date and time. So the last time that it was opened and edited, save date, uh, when it was first created. A bunch of convenient stuff like that. But we want, so let's see, document, and we just want the file name right now. So we can include the path um, or just the path if we want to have an easier time finding this, but we're just going to use file name only. And we can see it matches what our file is named. Again, we've got some formatting options, lowercase and whatnot. Um, if we don't like the .dwg right there, we can even remove that because it's likely a DWG that we're working with. So for consistency with everything out right now, we're just going to leave uppercase and remove the file extension and can hit OK and see that it auto-fills this field with our drawing name. So now if we click off and save as, let's say we want to just call it revision 1. Save. And then here we've got it updated right down here. Okay, so next. Yeah, fields are, are fantastic for things like tiger blocks. And if you actually go to the application menu and under um, utilities, drawing properties, and then you can select on the custom tab. And you can actually create anything you want. So you could put an address and uh, county and anything you want to include in the title block. You could add as custom properties and then, then uh, access those through the fields. OK. All right. So the next thing that we're going to go through is leaders. So we still have our regular leader command, L-E-A-D-E-R. And we can select what it's pointing at first. 
and then it'll let us select as many points as we really want um, and then enter our text poll. Okay, um, or we've got multi-leaders which um, have a style applied to them just like text. So again, we can see annotated and standard, and we can get into our multi-leader styles through that drop-down, this little um, arrow, or we can do M-L-E-R style, M-leader style right here. Right. So again, annotated and standard, we've got the styles and use um, options. We just want to create a new one. Go M-leader. Continue. Okay, so we've got a couple different options. Um, the same general options of everything else. We've got color, line type, line weight. Uh, here we can choose what our arrow is going to be, a dot or you know, something else, empty arrow, whatever we really want to put. Uh, and then we've got a leader break size. So this is when we use the break command over here. Um, if we have a crossing dimension, that default size of what that break is going to be. And we'll go ahead and the next tab is leader structure. So maximum leader points. When we were setting that uh, regular leader over here, it let us just keep clicking points. This is how it um, determines how many points we get to click. So your default is going to be two, one start point, and one end point. Uh, we could up that uh, as many we, as we want, really. But we're just going to leave it at two right now. These let us determine what angles we want it to snap to. So we'll put in uh, 45 just so we can see what that is. Um, and then landing settings. So whether or not we want this little landing next to the text. So sometimes you won't want it, sometimes you will. And we can make it a little bigger too. We can set the default size of that. So there, much bigger. Uh, again, we've got annotative options. Uh, but we'll skip those for now. Go to content. This is where we set up our text. So we can set the textile again. Right now we've got standard. Let's go in and modify that standard though. Um, so say we want um, something else, something a little thinner. Um, and let's change the height to Mariah, one. are you sure you want to be modifying standard? Right. <laughs> we want a new one. Uh, no. Okay, so new we want A, C, M, E, okay, and then we want to, yes, so we keep the height, and we've got a different font in there. So now that we've set a height here, we can hit close and see, even though we added a text style, standard still default, so let's change that, and we can see our text height gray out because we have a height set in the text style, but if we go back into that text style and set it to zero again, close, we can see our height override comes back and that'll act the same way in the dimensions as well. Um, so let's see, what else do we have here? Again, we've got options for how the leader is going to connect to this text. We can set it to connect to the bottom or to the side, and then we've got a couple other attachment options. So we'll just hit OK, and then we'll set this current, close. OK, so now when we add a multi-leader can select our point and see it's snapping to different degrees uh, because I set that angle. But if we go back into our M leader, leader styles, one of five structures, so we'll remove that. Okay, close and add another one. Oh, it must be ortho that's on. Okay, so now we can move around since we don't have uh, ortho on and we don't have any uh, default angles to snap to. So we'll just call this holy that is large text and click off. So now we've got our uh, very funky multi-leader style. And if we want to call both of these out at the same time, like say we really don't like this, we can erase it and add a leader to this. And we just select the one we're adding it to, and then we can place that other point, And it'll let us keep going through and placing other points. Let's say we don't need these because they're not the same thing. We can go in and remove the leaders again. So we can select the leader we want to um, remove from, 
and then the two that we want to get rid of, enter, and they're gone again. So if we have something with uh, multiple leaders all the way through, and say that's really not organized, we can align them all together using this align button, and that's the last handy one. So select all the multi-leaders, and then it wants us to select one that we're going to align everything to. So we'll do this one down here because it's probably the most off the drawing. And then we can select another line to line everything up to. So we'll turn ortho back on, make it straight up. And there now we've got them all organized. Okay, um, so now I'm going to hand it over to Dave so he can go over dimension styles and some other handy things. All right, thanks, Mariah. And let's see if I can show my screen. Looks like I can. Okay. So uh, basically, I'm just going to continue where uh, Mariah left off here. Um, you're basically covering most of the things that are on the annotation tab. And uh, the f I'm going to start with doing uh, or discussing dimensions. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a brand new drawing. And I'm going to just start it using the AutoCAD LT template file. and uh, just like Mariah was saying with text styles, uh, um, dimension styles have two default styles right out of the box, whether you're starting with AutoCAD or with the LT. Um, and you can get the dimension styles dialog in a number of different ways. Um, one is I can just select on the uh, dimension styles here. We can see I have annotative and standard. So I can get to manage dimension styles right from this spot. And that, that'll open up that dialog box. Um, there's also this handy little quick thing, um, little arrow in the bottom corner of the dimensions tab. And if I select on that, that'll also open it up. Or if you're old like me, and yes, I did use a, a pen plotter back in the late 80s, um, Calcomp 1040, I believe it was, uh, you know, you might want to type things. So you can just type in uh, dim style and you know, select that from the list to be able to get to it. Um, so, so you have the two styles. Uh, what I want to show, though, um, is kind of an interesting thing inside of AutoCAD. Uh, even if I set to architectural units, so I, I'm actually come from an engineering architecture background, um, working on buildings. So architectural units is what I always work with, right? So I'm setting this to architectural. I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to draw a line, maybe. Um, just you know, four units long. And if I come over, and I hate the grid, I'm going to turn the grid off, and I come over and I just do a dimension using the standard style, even though I just changed to architectural units, right? you see the default is actually going to be decimal in nature, because that's what the default is for a standard. It's, it's set up to be um, decimal units with four decimal places. So it's not something you would want to have if you're working in an architectural drawing. So let me jump over here to my working styles drawing. and um, I've got two little layouts that um, I'm going to start annotating. And I know I just said I work in architectural world, but I have a part. So we'll continue working with a part. It doesn't make any difference as far as dimensions are concerned. Um, and if I pick on the dimension style here, go ahead and select this, you'll see that uh, this is uh, using the standard dimension style. And what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to um, set up or modify the dimension style. And I want to show you basically why you never want to use standard or annotative out of the box. You always want to be creating your own. So if I come over and I say modify, and I'm just going to start making some changes. Let's say uh, that I want the color of my lines to be yellow. And I want, let's see, the uh, extension lines to be green because I'm like psychedelic type of stuff. And I'm going to switch my arrowheads here to close blank. And uh, I'll even change my leader arrowhead to something else here. I'll use right angle or something. Um, and then I'll come over to text. And um, I'm just going to change the text color to be cyan. Why not? 
Um, so just make some, some changes to it. I'm not going to go through all these different things just now, but I just want to show, what, show it what's going to happen later on in the presentation. So I'm going to hit close, and you can see I just have some really pretty dimensions now, right? Different colors. If I zoom in here, you can see I've got uh, you know a closed-filled arrowhead instead of a solid arrowhead. Um, and you're going to see what happens when I insert this drawing into something else a little bit later on. But uh, let me go back to my dimension styles. And I'm going to create a new one this time. And I'll type ACME as opposed to AMCE like Mariah does. Uh, so this is going to be ACME-DIMS. And um, you know, just to adding something like DIMS or notes or uh, leader or title block or whatever into your styles will help you know, you, you're remembering, you know, kind of what's what's going on with it. And obviously, uh, adding a company name, you know, I guess I should have put maybe ADSK in there instead of Acme, but um, adding a company name will pretty much guarantee that you're not going to be uh, accidentally overriding your style with somebody else's style. Um, so when you create a new style, it, it will ask you what style you want to start from. So I'm just going to start from standard. And... You also can say, um, you can actually create styles that are for specific types of uh, dimensions as well. So uh, I'm just going to let it, you know, leave it on all dimensions, but you could create a different style for linear dimensions versus angular dimensions if you wanted to. Uh, so I'm going to hit continue. And now I'm just going to start making some changes the way that I really want it. Um, so under lines, uh, I'm going to... I'll, I'll leave the, the yellow and the green just because it's interesting. Uh, maybe I'll change uh, my arrowheads though. Uh, and you, you can see how many how many different options you have with dimensions. Uh, first of all, I mean, there's what, uh, seven tabs going across the top here and lots of different options within it. Um, if you uh, look at system variables for dimensions, um, there's many, many system variables. Uh, a lot of these are tied to those system variables, but not everything. Uh, but there's lots of, of options for dimensioning. And far too many for me to go over everything. So just let, let it be known that you can really customize um, dimension styles to a, a very high level of, of um, Customization, yeah. Um, so um, when I go over to arrows, symbols and arrows tab, um, there's a list of different arrowheads here, right? We have the, the closed filled, and this is kind of actually a really nice feature uh, of the dimension style dialog box. First of all, it's resizable. I don't think this was resizable um, until maybe the last release, but it's resizable. And if I select on something, you can see how it's giving you a, a really nice um, preview of what the dimensions are going to look like in the drawing right inside the little window here. So um, there's a whole list of different types of arrowheads that you can choose from. And then the, way down the bottom, there's an option that says user arrow. So if I pick user arrow, you can actually choose from your own blocks, in this case, um, don't know why, but we created a, a, a block called vanilla. And when I hit OK here, you'll see, it's, well, it's kind of hard to see, but it's kind of a, a fancy little um, arrowhead. Um, and you can set that up uh, with your own s types of symbols if you don't like the ones that we have. Um, there's some centerline controls here. We, um, I'm going to cover centerlines in a little bit. You can even control the size of the arrowheads, or well, maybe when I'm just a little bit bigger than they were before, so I can set that up. Um, options on uh, arcs and you know, how you're going to make these things work. Uh, I'm going to go over to my text tab. <clears throat> and just like uh, what Mariah was saying with text, we don't want to ever be using standard or annotative. So one of the nice things inside of the dimension style dialog box is you can actually get to the textile editor directly by hitting the little ellipse button here. So I'm going to hit the ellipse and I'm going to create a new style. So Acme dash dims. And let's just change this a little bit. So I want to use 
something weird. Let's see. <clears throat> Century Gothic. No, maybe just Century. Oops. Yeah, so Century is a, just, I just wanted something that's kind of distinctive here. So I'm going to make that uh, Century. I'm going to hit Apply and Close. And one little gotcha that uh, I think a lot of people would have is I just created a, a text style. I said make it current, but it didn't make it current in the dimension style itself. So I want to make sure that I select that style here in the dimension style editor. Um, I'll leave the color the same, um, leave the height the same, text placement's fine. Um, the next tab here is basically what to do if things don't fit. So if you have uh, a text string that is too long to fit over the gap that you're, you're um, trying to dimension or the item that you're trying to dimension, you can uh, tell it how to adjust things. So um, <clears throat> if there's not enough room for, to place both text and arrows, what do you want to do? Do you want to enter the text and arrows as best you can? Basically, just put in the arrows or the text or both. You know, always keep it between. There's lots of different options. Um, if if the text isn't able to fit um, within it, do you want to put the text over it or under it? You know, that type of thing. Um, want to be prompted for the location of the text? You can even set that up. Uh, and then you can set up your units. So <clears throat> I know that we're dealing with the part, but I'm going to set this up to be architectural units instead. And you can set up uh, a uh, precision, um, how you want your fr fractions, if you want horizontal or diagonal fractions. All right, so you can see that happening there. Let's go ahead and use diagonal. Why not? Um, if you want to have a rounding factor, you can set that up. Um, zero suppression is, is really nice here, where you can say, you know, don't want to see the a zero before something or after something. So if you don't need it, don't do it. Um, angular dimensions, you, know, you can set up uh, what format you want for that. So I'm going to use degrees. I guess we could use radians, but I don't think we're going to do that. Um, and then there's even an option over on alternate units um, to display um, basically uh, you know metric and imperial at the same time if you want. So I have a multiplier of like 25.4 to go from inches to to uh, um, was it millimeters I believe. Um, <clears throat> same kind of thing. And then there's you know a tab for tolerances. We're not going to play with that. So I'm just going to hit OK. <clears throat> We'll set this current. And then we'll start adding some dimensions. So the, the traditional way of dimensioning things was um, all individual tools for doing dimensioning, right? So um, let's see if I come down, you know, you, you had your, your linear and um, actually, yeah, here, linear, aligned, angular, arc length, radius, diameter job and ordinate. Um, so we, you can still use those individual dimension tools. So I can just say linear, come over here and select on something and drag it up and add my dimension. And you can see here that the dimension style is what I said it told it to be, right? I've got my fancy little arrowheads, I've got my colors, I've got my my font that I chose, I got my alternate units. Um, so you, you know you can have a lot of control over that. But when I used linear, I actually had to go ahead and, and you know pick a start point, pick an end point, and then select a location for it. Instead of doing that, you can actually use what I call the super dimension tool. And um, th this is uh, basically we'll try to figure out what you want just by picking on stuff. So if I just pick on this line, I don't have to pick endpoint or you know in start point. I can just pick on the line and go ahead and dimension it. Do the same thing over here. Pick on it. Go ahead and snapped maybe to this point so I get the same um, distance away. 
if I pick the corners, right, we can get the overall dimension. Um, if I pick on the vertical line, right, it knows that it's now up and down instead of side to side. Um, so it's really a quick way to dimension. In fact, I can even select on the arc, and I will now get my radius of the arc being placed. So really handy set of tools um, for dimensioning. I don't have to keep changing the style, the dimension that I want to use. It's just going to figure out what you want. In fact, if I come over here and I select on um, this line here, and then I select on the next line, you'll see that it will even put in an angle in for me. So it, it automatically changed from an aligned dimension to an angular dimension just by picking on it. So I have, uh, have some dimensions in here. And uh, there are some other options um, that uh, we that you may may not know about. Right? Um, there is uh, over on the oh, actually, um, I forgot to talk, tell you about this one. So you notice that my center lines here are drawn with a, um, a center line line type right now. Um, that's because if I go to my uh, layer dialog or to the home tab, that center is actually my uh, current um, layer, right? I, I, that was the current layer that was set. And you probably don't want that to happen. So over in, in this uh, little dimensions um, panel, there is an option here that says, um, do you want to use the current layer or do you want to specify a layer? So what I was supposed to do was to set that up when I first started drawing things. So that now if I um, go ahead and I um, want to place a dimension here, it actually placed that on my dims layer instead of my center line layer. So again, um, saving a lot of picks and clicks by not having to uh, go and, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing one thing, I'm drawing center lines for, for over here. And then I want to add some dimensions. I don't have to change layers before I place the dimension. I can just go ahead and start adding the dimensions in, and it will put it on whatever layer you specify here. It's basically a, an override for, you know, specifically for dimensions. Um, if, uh, if I'm drawing a dimension, and let's say I'm just going from here, I just want to go to that for some reason. Then there's also like the continue option, and it just will pick up where you left off and let you start adding in dimensions. So uh, you don't have to start a dimension and continue it. Right? It's going to do that for you automatically. Um, the adjust space is, is a nice option here. I can uh, see, select the base dimension, and then it says, which one do I want to space? I'm going to pick this one. And I want this to be, I don't know, one unit. And it'll adjust that so that um, if I was dimensioning all over the place, I can keep the, the various pieces offset correctly. Okay, so that's maybe a little bit far apart. So I can select this one, select this one, and then say 0.5 and make that a little tighter. So uh, you can adjust things as you're going along. Um, dim jog line. Basically, you can select this and put in a little jog. So if this wasn't to scale, I could put in a little jog line there and just put in a little not to scale symbol or note on the bottom of that. Um, there's also a, um, a break option. So if you wanted to, I'm just going to say manual. I'm going to say from here to there. And it'll put in a break. So it's still one dimension. But I'll put in a gap so that if I had a node or something in there that I didn't want to have uh, in the way, I can adjust things like that. Um, any other ones that are interesting? Inspect, update. Um, sometimes if you make a, uh, a change to the dimension style, um, it's, the dimensions may not update automatically. So you can always just run update, select everything. And it'll just make sure that everything is reflecting the, the right values and and, uh, and settings and such. Uh, so that's a, 
at uh, least a quick overview about um, about the dimensioning. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file, do a save as, and work style is finished. I'm going to save this. <clears throat> and I'm going to go over here to insert styles. And if I do a dimension in here, so I'm just going to do a lead linear dimension again. Okay, you see that we're right back to that default dimension, decimal units, um, the uh, closed filled arrowhead and all of that. And I'm just going to insert the drawing that I was just working on. So it's work styles finished. And I'll go ahead and let me specify an insertion point and explode it. <clears throat> okay. And I'm just going to move this up so you can see this a little bit better. And you see what happens here with the drawing that I had. Right? This is what it looked like in the other drawing, where I had my open filled arrowheads and uh, various colors and all of that. And then over here, um, you know, I, I'm back to solid arrowheads. Right? Um, it's basically taken on the properties of, of this dimension style. Um, whereas the one that I created with my own custom name is exactly the way that it was in the other drawing file, right? So this is, that's the, the danger of using standard or annotative for textiles, dimension styles, leader styles, whatever. You want to make sure that uh, you're actually creating your own custom names so that you're not getting things overwritten by mistake. Um, there's one other thing. Um, when I was in the dim styles dialog box, modify under arrows, there was also this thing here for leader. And this is a little bit confusing, I think. Um, the, uh, the leader here is actually for the dim leader. It's not for an M leader. So uh, it's not what you're specifying for the multi-leader. That's in its own separate style. But if I just type in leader, you'll see that that'll give me the little um, straight arrow type of thing. This is leader. <clears throat> so that's what that little arrow head was for. All right, so let me uh, jump over to, uh, to something a little bit different here. I'm going to go over to this, this drawing. And there's some new tools that came out of a couple of, really, I think, last not this release, last release, I think, um, for center lines and center marks. And these are these are really handy um, for again annotating, especially manufacturing types of drawings. But basically, the center line I can just pick on two lines, and it's going to automatically find the center. And then I can go ahead and stretch this out, and do whatever you need to, to uh, to make it look nice, right? If I do select it on this side, do the same type of thing, and you know, stretch this out. So it's like, okay, that's kind of neat. Um, but the, the thing is, if I were to, um, let's see, do a stretch. I'm going to distort everything, but that's okay. You'll see that that center line stayed between those two points. So I didn't have to move it. it it's actually knows what what geometry was used to generate it, and we'll uh, place that accordingly. There's also a center mark, so I get a circle over here. I can just pick on that circle, and it'll automatically place in my center mark. And if I go and select the uh, properties here, you see there's lots of different options. I could uh, change the extension. Um, maybe I want to make that one unit instead of 0.12 on both sides, and just because I'm crazy. I want to do the other ones with two units, whatever. So you can you can make adjustments to the center lines. Very simple. If I move the center line, uh, the circle, you see that it again is anchored. And if I were to take the circle and just stretch it, it's going to adjust the center line accordingly as well. So these are basically smart annotation tools. The I'll say the goofy part with these tools is that there isn't a styles dialog or something like that 
where you can make all the settings, um, you know, your default settings. So um, I'm just going to do this one for a second. Get rid of this. <clears throat> but there is, um, there are um, system variables. So if you just type in center, <clears throat> you'll see that there is a list of different system variables. And you can figure out what most of them are just by the name, center, cross size, gap, mark, center line. This is center extension. So right now the default is 0.12. If I wanted it to be two units, <clears throat> I can set that up. And then when I select on the circle, you can see that it defaulted to two instead of that 0.12. Okay. And then uh, the, the last one I want to show here, I guess, is uh, the revision clouds. These are actually, so, you know, AutoCAD's had revision clouds for a long time. Uh, but they weren't exactly the smartest things in the world. So now if I, uh, if I pick on revision cloud, we see there's a couple different options, uh, rectangular, polygonal, and freehand. And if I just, uh, actually I'll jump back over to this one, I think. <clears throat> I'm just going to pick on rectangular. And let's say I just wanted to highlight that for some reason. I can go ahead and, and just uh, add in the revision cloud. And this isn't just a bunch of arcs like it used to be. <clears throat> if I pick on it, you'll see that there are grips. And there's only grips in the corners. <clears throat> Apologize, I have a dry throat. So I can just pick on a, a grip and I can stretch it. Or I could pick on the corner if I want to distort it a little bit. <clears throat> and just, you know, do whatever you need to here. There's also, um, let's see, if I do rectangular, I could change the arc length. So right now it's one unit. If I want it to be finer, maybe it would say 0.5. And then I draw it. You see, I can change the size of the uh, the little arcs that are generated for the thing. Again, same thing. Um, we can also draw a polygonal. So, like my little gingerbread house. Right. Oops, I hit escape. There you go. And again this is kind of smart so I can sit here and stretch it and it's not just a bunch of arcs. So that's those two. The th third one is freehand so this one is uh, more of a bunch of little arcs so I can just drag this around something right and this time I do get all those um, grips on each individual point. So that's kind of like the old uh, revision cloud tools, but uh, you'll see that, you know, for the other options, they're a lot smarter than they used to be. So that's kind of what we wanted to cover here today. And I think uh, at this point, we'll run through the last couple of slides, and then we could do another one more poll, and then see if there's any questions that people have. Okay, so we have some additional resources that kind of relate to what we've gone over today, uh, different things for text styles, dimension styles, um, and some other things on the community forums. Hitchhiker's Guide to AutoCAD Basics is always a great thing to help you get started. And also we've got a link to provide feedback on the webinar as well as these materials. Uh, and I believe the slides as well will be emailed after the webinar is finished. Um, but you can also email us directly at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. Okay. And at this point, I guess, um, see if there are any questions that uh, Bryce saw in the background that we might want to answer live. I find one. There's two, but they're basically the same question. Okay. So can no. leader tips be made so they automatically change size according to the scale of drawing? Um, 
So that's basically what we're talking about with annotation styles. So um, standard is just whatever size you specify. Annotative will work based on your drawing scale or your viewport scale. So uh, if you want it to automatically adjust, you know, the old way of doing things, I guess, and um, we'd, we would show if we had time during the webinar, but the old way would be putting things at different styles on different layers and then freezing things. If you had a quarter inch scale drawing and an eighth inch scale drawing, you'd freeze one layer or the other. With annotation, annotative styles, um, it will automatically will adjust, you know, 48 times or 96 times the size uh, based on the scale of the drawing. And I believe, and I believe if we actually sift through the YouTube channel, we do have a couple webinars that go over annotation scales and, and things like that, um, or annotate scaling specifically. So that may be something that we can find a link for somewhere. Yeah, there's, uh, we've covered a lot in the previous webinars, so I'm sure we've covered it in one of, one of the previous ones. Um, there's also a question here about um, dimensions and such updating if you move things. And yeah, absolutely. If I just jump back over to my drawing here, and I'm just going to, you know, let's see. I'll just take this one here. So I'm just going to take this line and stretch it over. You'll see that the dimensions can adjust accordingly. So um, by default, they're associative to the objects that they're connected to. You could break that associativity, but they're, by default, they're connected. So when did the center line options change? I think center lines was in 2017 is when we added center lines. I'm pretty sure that was a new feature for 2017. In fact, I know it is because that's where I stole the from the new features uh, presentation from 2017. Um, yeah, good question. Uh, there's a, if you have text and you mirror it, sometimes the text uh, will be flipped. So I think we could show that pretty quick here. If I just do, uh, just, I'll just do text. Oops. Yeah, text. Okay. So I've got some text here. If I use mirror, and I flip it, I see it's that time it's okay. If I type in mirror text and set that to one and mirror it, now it's backwards. So mirror text is the, the system variable, um, M-I-R-R -R text should be set to zero if you don't want text to be mirrored. How do you get the auto complete fields populated in the title? Um, I think that was talking about fields, if I'm guessing right. Um, so fields, again, um, pretty simple kind of thing. Um, if I right click on the piece of text, you can say insert a field. And then you can select from any of these things like yeah, I just want this to be the current date, and I want it in that format. I hit OK, and it will automatically adjust. Oops, I hit Escape, so instead of OK. Um, so fields are, are very powerful. You can add it really into any kind of text, um, I, I believe. So anything from um, a leader, uh, dimension, an attribute, uh, M text, whatever, just to select on it, highlight what you want, and then say insert a field, and you can create whatever you want here. Let's see what else we have here. Can you change the vision cloud size after you create them? Yeah, you can change the size, but I, I, I don't think there's a way to like change the bubbles or the arcs from one size to another. I think, now well, let's just take a look. Let's see if there's a property here. Global width, lengths. 
I don't see a property for it, but you can use scale to scale the whole thing up and then snap it back down if you really don't want to redraw it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the, these things are grayed out, so um, I'm guessing that the length or something is maybe the, the property. Uh, so I don't think you can adjust that after the fact. And where are we? So maybe get a, one more question if we can find a, a good one here. Okay. Well, um, so there's a couple of good questions about uh, AutoCAD architecture and AutoCAD MEP. And um, maybe, you know, some of these tools aren't displaying in the out-of-the-box uh, ribbon panels, like uh, revision clouds and centerline panel. Um, my guess is that it just wasn't enough room to put them in there. Um, but you can still get to any of these tools. Um, they're all available. So center mark is the command for drawing a center mark, center line for drawing a center line. Uh, the revision clouds is rev cloud. Um, so you can definitely type them in and um, you can also add them to the ribbon if, if you, they're not available uh, out of the box. But uh, usually those kinds of tools are added. I don't have architecture open at the moment, uh, so I can't look to see why that wouldn't be there. But uh, it, I would think that they would have been in there. But uh, so we're about out of time. I just want to thank everybody for joining today. And uh, we have one last poll before we let you go, or um, at least I would like to ask one more poll. And let's grab this. And basically, we always kind of want to know, um, let's see, where are you? We always want to know if you learned anything new. And I know this is some basic kinds of stuff today, but uh, hopefully we covered something that people didn't know about. And it does look like we did. Uh, about 97% of people saying that they learned something new. So that's great to hear. And uh, hopefully uh, yeah, we'll see um, most of you folks back at a future session. And uh, thanks and have a great day.